Hey, what's up? It's Bon. Let's talk about The Division. Um, so in this video, I'm going to kind of chat about uh, Division Heartland. Um, for full transparency, I can't really speak on it personally um, for reasons that I'm sure hopefully I can talk about one day. Um, but what I think I can comment on pretty safely is um, what is being discussed publicly in articles and things like that, um, and just kind of my take on them, um, especially with the Division Heartland being uh, kind of talked about and compared to Escape from Tarkov, a game I have over 3,400 hours in, um, and why I think that can be a good or a bad comparison. So I'm going to take us over to an article uh, from Paul Tassi. Uh, Paul is uh, pretty common in the uh, looter shooter space when it comes to um, talking about things that are going on. He mostly speaks on Destiny, but he's touched on The Division and Outriders and Warframe and stuff as well. Um, I mean, I think a lot of his takes tend to be pretty clickbaity um, and not super reliable. Like... Uh, I know for a fact there's things in this article that are not true, um, but I, you know, won't be talking about that. Um, but the headline is the Division Heartland details leak, draw Tarkov comparison. So uh, we're just going to kind of scan through the article a little bit and I'll kind of give my takes on it. Um, he, uh, he does have a good point here at the beginning with the Ubisoft cannot seem to keep anything under wraps to have its showcase. I don't think that Ubisoft has announced anything in the last at least the last week or two, but especially the last few months or even years that hasn't leaked before. So it's like something leaks and then they like scramble together some, you know, official PR and put it out, which is fine, I guess, but it really makes it look like it's kind of a, for lack of a better word, like it's kind of a shit show over there of, you know, like keeping stuff under wraps and, um, and they've always had issues with this stuff, right? Like, uh, I remember when the Division Two got announced. Uh, some the the like the like the German Ubisoft like side put out a press release about the announcement of the Division Two like two hours before they did the stream where they officially announced it. Like it's it's a giant company with like twenty thousand employees. I understand why it's you know that bureaucracy is crazy, but I don't know. Anyways. Um, so, you know, the Division Heartland has been getting talked about a little bit lately. Um, I had been speculating at one point that I was afraid this game may not even come out because um, they've gone so dead silent on it where we've got fairly open conversation about uh, like X Defiant and stuff like that. Um, we've literally heard nothing from Heartland. So um, there's also uh, another big thing. Uh, it's just it's weird. It's it's just a weird thing. So. Um, it talks about some of this info that's gotten out, um, supposedly verified by people who have tested the game. I would just encourage people to be highly skeptical about this information. Again, uh, just to be smart for myself, I'm not going to really detail exactly what I have issues with in here or that what things that I may not think that are necessarily true. Uh, but we'll comment on what we have. So um, this massive PVE VP in storm operation. So fight together and 45 player PVE VP storm operations against a group of dangerous rogue agents and aggressive faction known as the vultures, all while surviving a lethal lethal a virus prep the battlefield and PVE excursion operations, complete PVE missions, gather gear, activate alerts and prep the battlefield and excursion operations. Uh, progress and adapt to survive play as one of six agents and select between three classes each match all with their own perks and skills um so on here he kind of goes on to say um this reminds us of a escape from tarkov a, a little bit um i i guess um i i know that this has been talked about publicly quite a bit um this whole idea of this like pve thing where you like prep the map like you go in and you do stuff and then there's like a separate mode where you can take advantage of those things that you prep i have 
zero faith that anyone wants to do that. Um, I don't know if this game's going to be like a battle royale or whatever. Um, if they're comparing it to Tarkov, it won't be. It'll be like an extraction game. Uh, so like the cycle, Tarkov, things like that, um, which is probably better suited to the division, in my opinion, um, than, a, than just a straight up BR. I know everyone wants survival 2.0. Uh, I bet this is that's what this was supposed to be at one point, and then they decided to make it huge, and now we're now it's three years late. But um, they they mentioned this thing where Doctor Disrespect has that dead drop game coming that just looks like garbage. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, this person here tweeted out, "I have these photos saved from you know like last year when they accidentally posted a listing for Heartland on the Ubisoft website. Um, it did kind of crack me up that people were like, oh, it looks like Fortnite. It's like no, this just looks like low res Division Two photos. Like." This is pretty clearly just an offshoot of the Division Two. Um, it's it's just funny that people they see the free to play thing, so they want it down it immediately. Um, and then uh, Paul kind of has his own little take here um, about maybe it's this is going to be like a blend of uh, the Dark Zone and Survival. Um, it's um, I, I don't know. I, I think the comparisons, it's so interesting. I see a lot of um, chatter about Tarkov um, very often, whether it's talking about you know like comparisons with Heartland or just discussions about Tarkov in general. Um, and what's so funny about it is that I don't know that there's any like major journalist, like game journalist who play Tarkov. Um, I'm sure some of them have like played for like a couple hours, but you legit have to put like hundreds of hours into Tarkov before before you understand it um, and before I think you can really see what kind of game it is and Tarkov is a really interesting game because it's um, it's very unique um, I don't think there's a single other game even the games that like the cycle and stuff like that they aren't the same it, it, it's its own beast um, and and it's like that for good and bad reasons um, you know they, they that that company Battle State um, has like this like crazy attention to detail in some parts of their game. Um, and supposedly this desire to make it this like ultra mill sim, like hyper realistic survival game. But then if you've played it, like I have for years at this point, um, they've definitely, uh, they've gained a lot of popularity in the last few years. And you can definitely tell that the guy who runs the company really loves that attention. And um, you can also tell that I think their original vision for Tarkov has changed a lot since it became an extremely popular game and they've definitely kind of allowed it to stay a little more creator content creator slash streamer friendly um and, and maybe not made it as hardcore of a game as it was once meant to be um but like i'll be straight up like as someone who has like i said before 3400 hours in tarkov um i don't think comparisons to that are like very good um, like I said, Tarkov is a very unique game and, and it is, it's like very addicting. Um, but one thing you'll also find about most Tarkov players who I think are being honest with themselves is that you hate it. Like you hate Tarkov. No one likes Tarkov. It's, it's a terrible game. Um, and, and it's, it's unbalanced. It's badly designed. It's, it's on the unity engine, which is just a crap show. Um, it, it's the, the tick rate on their servers is like super low and it makes any kind of competitiveness in the game feel terrible. The desync is really bad. They're really inconsistent about content and things like that. In a game like this, just like all of these live service games, needs a like, consistent content. Now, Tarkov has been resting on the fact that it's in quote unquote beta, uh, even though it's probably made more money than most AAA games um, and, and, and is played by more people than most of them. But, you know, that they're running off that that uh, that super fun uh, Star Citizen model almost of, uh, yeah, 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 there's a lot of really big stuff coming, we promise. Just keep, you know, piling in money. Um, and so I don't really think the comparisons to Tarkov are as exciting as people who have never played Tarkov may think it is. Um, it's not going to be Survival 2.0. Like if, if people want that survival experience from Division 1, this won't be it. Um, I didn't think it was going to be anyways. And if it's if, if this comparison is true, it definitely, definitely won't be. The other thing is, is that this for this to work for the Division Heartland, if it's going to try to be this Tarkov style game, that's a free to play live service title. It's going to need 
consistent, and substantial updates. And to this day, Ubisoft has only done that with like Siege. And you could argue Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Valhalla, but that's like a different, that's, that's a single player game, right? And so Siege is the only game that they've like kind of done the live service thing right with. Literally nothing else. And, and they've canceled multiple games. You know, they, they, they had like the, their BR game that they tried to do. Um, and, and then they have games like, like Roller Champions and stuff that like they're not canceling it and they're making new content for it. But it's like few and far between. And it's like just it's going to fall apart. It's going to flounder. They had that mobile game that had all the Tarka or the uh, Clancy universe in it. They got rid of that. And you know, they recently canceled the Ghost Recon Frontline live service game. Um, and, and we're aware that they canceled a few other games that we weren't aware of yet. I'm willing to bet they were free to play live service games. And so that was why I initially thought that maybe this game may not even survive. Now, I think the Division uh, franchise or IP is, is pretty strong, a, a lot stronger than people realize it might be. And so um, I'm glad that this seems like it's still going to be coming. But Ubisoft isn't good at this. Um, they, they, they aren't good at this live service model. They, 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 they never have been. They still aren't. Uh, I would argue to this day that you have a game and a franchise in the division, the division one and two, uh, two games, especially two, that had they been properly supported by Ubisoft, I think would like be top games in gaming, like would be up there with Destiny and stuff like that. But instead, you know, they, they give them not enough time to finish the base game and then that comes out and then they move them on to a new project and leave a skeleton crew to try to you know continue to make like triple a level stuff on a, a schedule and for anyone who's a fan of the division two you know how that's gone it hasn't gone very well it hasn't worked and it's not to the depreciation of the devs they they obviously are working their tails off but there's not enough of them and they aren't getting enough time uh, for how many of them there are, and we've seen that. So, um, you know, are, are you going to tell me that all of a sudden Red Storm is being given all the resources and time they need for this? Hopefully, um, but we we don't know that. And if history has told us anything with Ubisoft, we can't expect that to be true. So, uh, if if we want to go on the Ubisoft model and how these things go, this is how Heartland's going to go. They're going to show off a cool trailer on Saturday during the Ubisoft Forward. A lot, of, a lot of Division fans and maybe fans of this genre will be interested or excited. Wow, that seems really interesting. I can't wait to play that. Here in a few months, maybe by the end of the year, a public beta comes out or maybe the game releases in like an early state. Who knows? Uh, we'll play it for a couple days. There'll be some buzz. They'll be like, oh, cool. Ubisoft will be pumping those streamers full of money to play it on stream. It'll have 100,000 people watching it on Twitch. Everyone's going to be so excited. They're going to have Twitch drops for a bunch of apparel that like looks OK. Uh, people will be playing it and checking it out. Um, and then a week later, those uh, contracts will run out and, and like Shroud and Dr. Lupo will stop playing it. And and then there will still be some buzz and excitement within like the division community or people who found the game. Uh, so there'll still be a decent amount of buzz. And then two weeks later, uh, you know, there'll be the videos coming out about how to exploit this, why this bug, uh, these issues with the servers. And then a few weeks later, people are going to start to say, oh, OK, so where's like the new characters? Where's the new classes? Uh, where's the new missions? And where's this? And then uh, and then it'll just disappear. And there'll be a core group of people who keep playing it and say, hey, it's actually really good. I may even be part of this group. And just wait, you know, they'll have some cool content coming out and then they'll put out some content, but they'll bring back some bugs that they fixed back when the game first came out and and then so on and so forth. And and then it will just go the way that things go. Right. I hope that's not true. I hope I'm completely wrong. I hope Heartland takes uh, the gaming world by storm. Um, but I suspect that whatever type of game this is really going to be is probably like three years late. Um, it, it's probably at least at least a year or two late for people to like see it and be like, wow, this is really unique and interesting, um, especially if it would have released back closer to the Division 2. 
Um, maybe it comes along with like a Division Three announcement or something. They really get the hype going. I don't know. Um, I don't think so because I don't think the logistics of a Division Three are anywhere near uh, near us. I think that I think a Division Three happens one day. I don't think it happens maybe in this generation of consoles. Is my honest take, but we'll have to wait and see. That's my thoughts. That's my rant on this uh, this whole situation. Um, I, I, I really try to be a, a pretty optimistic person, even though it may not necessarily seem like it um, in, in this particular video. Um, I just, I just, I want to see this franchise succeed, and I want the devs to get their flowers those who have worked on it before who are working on it now and i want um this this ip to to finally be fully realized um but my honest my honest opinion is that no matter how hard these devs work no matter how hard these studios advocate for this franchise and this ip um that as long as the current leadership is in ubisoft who is it's just they're never gonna give it its due it's never gonna happen. Um, I I feel like almost like a fool at this point, being such a big fan of The Division. The same way as I almost feel like a fool being a big fan of Mass Effect. These are two franchises that are surely going to disappoint me in the long run, despite passionate work by the developers and by the people who actually care about the franchise because the people at the top don't care at all. And, um, and, and that's a bummer, but at the end of the day, we remain optimistic. We hope for the best. We don't get upset about stuff until we have a reason to be. And even though this may come off, uh, this video may come off as a little pessimistic, I promise I'm really excited about this. I'm, I promise I really hope it's super, super good and is very successful and that I'm very wrong about most of the things I said. But um, we're just going to have to wait and see. Unfortunately, I just can't look away from Ubisoft's track record over the last so many years. So this video was definitely longer than I intended. So I thank you if you are still watching. Um, I will be trying to co-stream this Ubisoft Forward event on Saturday. I'm going to have my child. Uh, I'm going to be watching her that day. And so I have no idea if she'll nap through it or if she'll play while I do this thing. We'll see. Uh, so just keep an eye out on my Twitter, at uh, Von Diesel for that um subscribe to the channel like this video comment down below with what you think uh hit me up on twitter or anywhere else on social media as bond diesel um check out my twitch uh bondiesel.tv slash uh, twitch.tv slash bond diesel and um i don't know check out my podcast the echo cast i talk about games i interview people it's on all major podcast platforms and this youtube channel that's all i have for this one so until next time